Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Covert, and today's episode is the New Orleans Saints draft class. Starting with the first pick of the draft, Marshawn Lattimore, cornerback at Ohio State. When it comes to his production, he scored 54, 54.72 in terms of solo tackle market share, 65.94 when it comes to the set to pass, deflect, pass deflection market share. Excuse me. The issues in terms of his production is that he does hit Pro Bowl level when it comes to his solo tackle market share, but his pass deflection market share does not hit all pro or pro bowl level when it comes to that measure uh, there have been a handful of players who have become uh, special players who did not hit this metric and these are those players uh, but most pro bowl slash all pro players hit at least 77 or higher uh, most of the hall of famers especially deon sanders charles woodson rod woods like name a hall of fame guy uh, at cornerback, and they pretty much hit 77 or higher in terms of pass flexion market share. Uh, so that's a little bit of a scary pick when it comes to this pass flexion market share production. Like only one year of production, though. Um, so there is some credence that that is a possibility he could rise above that. His age is also intriguing. Scored 98.37 in terms of his age score. Very young player. Uh, so there is some potential that he could kind of rise above that lack of pass deflection market share production based on his age and also based on his athleticism where he scored 87.92 in terms of explosiveness for his size, 91.27 in terms of speed for his size, which are good marks again, uh, near elite explosiveness and elite speed. Didn't do flexibility testing though, uh, which kind of bums me out. Like, wh why didn't you do the short shell three count? <laughs> that kind of worries me a bit. They didn't do those things. Uh, so. I would say Lattimore has potential to become a Pro Bowl cornerback uh, based on his athleticism. And this is actually the main thing, is that Lattimore does not hit the 32-inch arm length threshold when it comes to all-pro cornerbacks since the 1999 NFL draft class. Every single multiple all-pro cornerback during that time span had at least 32-inch arm length or higher. And Lattimore does not hit the 32-inch arm length threshold, but he does hit the Pro Bowl uh, arm length threshold of 30 inches so at the at the very least you have a guy who has potential to be a pro bowler i can't say that he's going to be a pro bowler like out the gate like yes he's a pro bowler because again there, there are questions in terms of his past selection market share and there's also questions in terms of it not hit, not testing in the flexibility drills like why wouldn't you test in the flexibility drills uh, but at the very least i do think that this is a guy that can become a pretty high quality player based on his age and based on his athleticism it's just that there are some question marks from uh, past flexion market share production and on, on the fact that he didn't do flexibility drills and we come to the next pick of the draft in terms of ryan ramchick offensive tackle out of wisconsin the only issue i can really say here is that ryan ramchick did not do any athleticism testing i only really do offensive line metrics around athleticism testing so i can't really speak much on him about him uh, because of that but the only thing I can say is based on his height and weight, you know, he's six foot six, over 300 pounds. He's a versatile player. Uh, he hits at least the all pro marks when it comes to just height at the offensive tackle position. And based on his height and weight, he could pretty much fit any position. He could play guard, he could play tackle. So, like, there's a lot of scheme versatility based on just his physical characteristics. But I can't really say that he has any potential to become much of anything data wise because I don't have any athletic testing to really project him that well so that's the only thing I could say is I really can't project Ryan Ramchick because I just don't have athleticism data in order to do that uh, then we come to the next pick in terms of Marcus Williams defensive safety out of Utah when it comes to his production he scored 83.79 in terms of solo tackle market share 91.62 when it comes to interception market share and 38.3433 excuse me when it comes to pass flexion market share uh, the only marks that, that hurt him a bit in terms of free safety stuff is his pass flexion market share production but there has been one safety in uh, ha, ha ha clinton dix who has a similar production profile who did not do well in terms of pass flexion market share but did do well in terms of interception market share and he's also a guy that hit Pro Bowl outcomes. But the difference between HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix and Marcus Williams is that Marcus Williams is a much more athletic player. Uh, scored 95.35 in terms of explosiveness for his size, 50.57 in terms of speed for his size, and 70.89 when it comes to flexibility for his size. This compared to HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix, Williams is a much more explosive player and in general just a better all-around athlete. So I think if you end up getting a better or a more athletic version of HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix, 
I think that's a good thing uh, because they have a lot of similarities when it comes to just their production, their age, and their athleticism. And this is kind of the last thing, just showing uh, the, the metric similarities when it comes to Marcus Williams compared to how Clinton Dix from their age to their production to their athleticism. Uh, so I think this is going to be a good pick. I, I can't really say he's going to be a multiple Pro Bowler consistently because Ha Ha Clinton Dix hasn't exactly become a multiple Pro Bowler consistently. Uh, but at the very least, I can say that he can become a high quality starter based on his production and also based on his athleticism traits. And we come to the next pick of the draft in terms of Alvin Kamara running back out of Tennessee. When it comes to his production, he scored 36.30 when it comes to total offensive market share production. The issue with this is in the modern era, so all the way back to the 1999 NFL draft class, there hasn't been a running back to hit multiple Pro Bowl or All-Pro marks uh, with a production score this low. Um, in fact, the last time a, a, a running back had this low of a uh, production mark and ended up being a multiple Pro Bowl uh, running back was Priest Holmes. And past him, the last time this happened as well was in the 1983 NFL draft class uh, with a running back that was drafted by uh, the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, well, yeah, so it, it's been a, it, the production just isn't good. It doesn't hit the modern area of, of thresholds when it comes to, uh, again, three time Pro Bowl level, five time Pro Bowl level, and all pro level. He doesn't hit those marks when it comes to his production largely because he was a committee back. But the, the, the bigger thing that really hurts him is just in terms of athleticism, scored 95.23 in terms of explosiveness for his size, 61.71 when it comes to speed for his size, and only 42.04 when it comes to flexibility for his size. And he didn't hit the three cone level of 7.09 or lower, which again, 92% of all the running backs from the 1999 uh, NFL draft class to now who became multiple Pro Bowl slash all pro running back since that time period had at least a three cone of 7.09 or less. And the only back to not hit that mark was DeMarco Murray, uh, who this is DeMarco Murray's production and athleticism compared to Alvin Kamara. And the bottom line is, is, is DeMarco Murray was a much better athlete when it comes to speed and was much better in terms of flexibility and also was much better when it comes to production. Uh, he, you know, DeMarco Murray hit the three-time Pro Bowl level, uh, but Kamara did not hit the three-time Pro Bowl level. So basically what I'm saying is, is Alvin Kamara has a skill, I mean, he has a skill set. He's explosive, uh, and that's a, I mean, that's that's a big thing. You know, explosion backs are important, uh, but when it comes to speed and it comes to flexibility, he doesn't really have those sort of things to, to back him, which is weird because he's seen as a, a space back. So, um, so yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, as a committee back, he can work. Uh, I'm not discounting that at all. I think he's going to be used a certain way with the Saints. It's just in terms of him becoming like a bell cow, uh, a back that gets 300 touches uh, a year type of guy, that's just less likely based on his production and based on his athleticism traits. Um, so that's the only thing I would say is that he really can work in the system that the Saints have, but I would not expect like serious high quality outcomes uh, with that type of player in terms of Alvin Kamara. And then we come to the next pick in terms of Alex Anzalon, a linebacker out of Florida. When it comes to his production, he scored 56.74 in terms of solo tackle market share. Age score-wise, scored uh, 96.93, which is in intriguing. But the big issue is just production. Uh, again, 100% of multiple all-pro linebackers since the 1996 NFL draft class had at least a solo tackle market share score of 91 or higher. And when it comes to Pro Bowl outcomes, they scored at least 77 or higher. And this is out of every single linebacker who became a Pro Bowler or All-Pro player since the 1996 NFL Draft class. So high-quality outcomes are off the table for Alex Anzalon when it comes to historical perspective from production. But what he does have is athleticism. When it comes to his athleticism, he scored 26.03 in terms of explosiveness for his size, 74.03 when it comes to speed for his size, and 88.44 when it comes to flexibility for his size. All those marks are good. Speed is good. Flexibility is good. Explosiveness isn't good. Uh, there hasn't been a multiple All-Pro or Pro Bowl uh, linebacker as well who has had as low of explosion score as Al Al Alex Anzalon put up. But this at least is someone that I can see as a starter. He has above average speed. He has above average flexibility. And despite the fact that he doesn't have you know, Pro Bowl level or All-Pro level uh, production, he does have at least 
good enough production with good enough athleticism that I could see long-term starter stuff with Alec Anzalon. Um, so at the very least, I would say that that's what you should expect. He can become a long-term starter, but anything more than that would be significantly less likely in terms of Pro Bowl slash All-Pro status. Uh, then we come to the next pick of the draft in terms of Trey Hendrickson, defensive end out of Florida Atlantic. When it comes to his production, he scored 46.98. When it comes to solo tackle market share, 93.97. When it comes to sack market share, 91.83. When it comes to tackle for loss market share, uh, the only area where he kind of hurts a bit is solo tackle market share. He doesn't really hit Pro Bowl or All Pro level solo tackle market share production, uh, but he does have good marks in terms of sack market share and TFL market share. And when it comes to his athleticism, he scored 49.83 in terms of explosiveness for his size, 74.24 when it comes to speed for his size, and 86.79 when it comes to flexibility for his size. Uh, he's another guy that isn't the most explosive back, kind of average-ish when it comes to him as a defensive end, uh, but he does have above average speed and he does have near elite flexibility. So there's a lot of positives here. I think Trey Hendrickson, based on his profile, can become a long-term starter and could become a little bit more than that because his athleticism traits do show some really intriguing things. Uh, it's just that when you have a solo tackle mark share score that's that low, 46.98, uh, I can't really say that he's going to be a pro bowler or all pro player when there hasn't been a player at the defensive end position or the rush uh, sort of position, edge position, uh, to become a pro bowler or all pro player with solo tackle mark share score that low. Um, so that's the only thing I would say, but he does have good sack market share, good TFL market share, and good athleticism. So there's a lot of positives here that, positives here that he could become a long-term starter. And then the last pick for the Saints is Al Quandin Muhammad, defensive end out of Miami. When it comes to his production, he scored 81.66 in terms of solo tackle market share, 45.23 when it comes to sack market share, and 45.35 when it comes to tackle for loss market share. Um, all those marks are good except for the sack and the tackle for loss market share. Both those marks don't really hit high quality outcomes. And age score wise, he scored 41.36 in terms of his age score, which also doesn't really hit high quality outcomes. And then when it comes to his athleticism, which is really the nail in the coffin for him, uh, he only had 26.85 in terms of explosives for his size, 26.19 when it comes to speed for his size, and 39.86 when it comes to flexibility for his size. So despite the fact that he does have decent solo tackle market share, he does not have the athleticism of a high quality player uh, regardless. So, so again, he doesn't hit uh, the sack market share production needs to hit. He doesn't hit the TFL market, market share production that he needs to hit. He doesn't hit the age area that he needs to hit. And he also doesn't hit the athleticism marks that he needs to hit for a high quality player. Uh, most likely, I would see Muhammad as a backup slash reserve type guy. You got him late. But again, I, I don't like to I don't like to go. Oh well, you got him late, so it's a it's a great it's a good pick. Like I'm not gonna be hard on you because you got him late. You know you got a bust pick late. I'm not, I'm not that type of guy. So this is a this is a great to do this. Uh, there could have been other players that would have been taken at that spot that that could have become starters. I know every year people go, well, you can't find seventh rounders and you can't find starters in the seventh round. Well, every year one or two starters gets found in the seventh round. And on top of that, every year there are some UDFA guys that become starters. So don't tell me that, oh, well, d don't do appeal to futility, I guess, when it comes to uh, the draft that late. You need to try to maximize every single pick that you got, take advantage of every opportunity. Uh, but overall, just when it comes to Alquan and uh, Muhammad, I, I just think that there's just not a lot of successful stuff that's going to come out of that. Uh, so how do I feel about the Saints draft class? I think it's a good draft class. I think when you look at it in terms of the totality of it, you get a cornerback who has some risky things. I mean, he was taken very high and lot, lots of risky things when it comes to him in terms of, you know, just all pro, uh, you know, all, all pro upside is just really off the table when it comes to just from a physical standpoint. Uh, but he could become a pro bowler based on his age and based on his athleticism traits. Uh, you get a guy in Rand Ramchick who could become a long-term starting tackle or a guard based on just his physical profile. Uh, you get Marcus Williams who has potential to be Haha -ha Clinton Dix, but better when it comes to athleticism. Uh, you get Alvin Kamara who I think there were better backs that could have become better in terms of long-term based on production and stuff like that. Uh, but he does have some intriguing athleticism marks, and he is going to be used as a committee back. So again, this is all about how the Saints value what they value. So he can be valuable in that system. It's just in every other system, for the most part, 
he's going to be a guy that just isn't going to be able to become a bell cow back, a guy that's going to get 300 plus catches, you know, 300 plus touches, I mean, in offense. That's just very unlikely when it comes to his production. Then you get Alec Anzalon, who has some potential to become a starter based on athleticism. Trey Hendrickson has potential potential to be a starter based on production, based on athleticism. And then Alquan and Muhammad uh, is the only guy that I, I think has the least likely chance of becoming a successful player. And probably most likely is going to be the guy that doesn't really do much uh, for the Saints. So it was a good draft class. They, they could have done better. Every team could have done better, really. Um, again, I'm not trying to hate on everybody, but you, everybody could do better. But at the very least, it is a class that I think is going to give you some starters, a bunch of starters, really. There, there is lots of potential for a bunch of starters from this class from a data perspective. And you also have some high-quality potential. You know, there are some guys who at least have some potential. You don't really have any guys where it's where they hit everything to the point where I can say that, yeah, that guy's pro, like a very highly likely that that player will become a pro bowler shot all pro guy you don't have any players like that but you do have some players where there is a chance they they can become a pro bowler and that's that's better than most people so uh, i think that uh, again overall this is a good draft class so again my name is james coburn you can follow my work at gym metrics on twitter you can also follow my work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com and if you like this content if you want, want more content like this feel free to leave a like and subscribe uh, that helps me out the most in terms of you know just getting information out there to guys and feel feel free to share the video as well if you have friends or family or you know draft buddies that you know follow the draft and stuff like that uh, again getting my name out there kind of helps out a lot in terms of stuff like that if you have any if you have any questions leave a comment below and I will talk to you guys in the next video peace